50 years ago, a person walked on the moon for the very first time. Scientists and engineers worked for years to build a spaceship that could make it 240 miles up the moon. Finally, on July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 rocket was ready to launch. Three brave astronauts, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins squeezed into a small capsule of their huge rocket and the countdown began. After three whole days in the rocket, they landed on the moon and Neil Armstrong said those famous words as he walked across the surface. That's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. Hey, he was right. The technology that they use on that ship is the technology that we use now to make our lives awesome. Hey, welcome to the party. I'm Brooklyn the Scientist. And I'm Paul the Magician. Today is a STEM party. We're gonna learn about science, technology, engineering, and math. How much I love it and why it's awesome in our lives. And I'm gonna show you how STEM made me magic. That's right, today we're gonna do experiments, magic, demonstrations, and maybe even a downloadable prize so you can do the magic with us. Now, over 50 years ago, in July 1969, they put, they, wonderful scientists, put a man on the moon. What? A man on the moon! Oh, I thought it was a rabbit on the moon. Oh, it was definitely a man. I know, but in 1969, I was in fourth grade, which means now I'm old. And a friend of mine in fourth grade said, hey, Paul, since you want to be a magician, have you ever seen the rabbit in the moon? I said, what are you talking about? And he showed me that this crater right here looks like the nose. Oh, there's a real picture. That looks like the nose of a rabbit, with these craters being the big ears that go back. Okay. This is like an Easter basket. This is his big hind feet and his little cotton tail. Can you see it? Hey! A new perspective I've never thought about before. Do you want to meet my rabbit? Do you have one? Oh yeah, of course every magician does. Here, well, excellent. Show you. Uh, it's usually right here. Oh, she's not home. Oh dear. Oh, I know where she is. Uh, well, Brooklyn? all good science starts with a question. So I want to ask, where's the rabbit? I'll get him for you. All right. I'll have to warn you, Brooklyn. She is really shy. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. It's okay to be shy? Absolutely. Shy, right. excited, any talents. All right. Here she comes. Important. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. No, she's a nice scientist. Yes, yes, yes. No, I don't think she's going to come out of the hat. Oh, my goodness. What? She totally came out. No, no. She's too she shy. She won't come out. <gasps> what? She totally came out. No, that's she not. Ah! <laughs> Everybody say hi, Luna. Hi, Luna. I named my rabbit after the moon. I like it. La what, Luna. What, Luna? Oh, Luna says she's a real bunny. And she says she wants to fly to the moon. Hey, dreams are possible with STEM. Should we help her? Let's do it. All right. I, I engineered a little rocket to help Luna get to the moon. This is my Luna rocket. Wow. Yep, we're going to put her right in here. Don't be shy, Luna. It's OK. Good. In you go. Boop, boop, boop. Perfect. And now... Are you sure this is safe? Well, uh, I've only messed it up once. Okay. Yeah. And this is the second time I've tried it. Oh, boy. Good. Science now, experiments are just that. An experiment. It's important that when you have a goal that you take careful aim. So we're going to aim Luna right towards the moon. Now, I need the boys and girls at home to help me by doing the countdown. We'll start at five and then we'll go to one. Then watch carefully, you'll see Luna fly to the moon. Here we go, all together. One, five, two, four, three, two, two one. Whoa, oh my goodness, she's totally gone. Let me see, oh my goodness, she made it. I can't believe it, Luna has flown to the moon. Hey, and she got her other goal too. She's a real rabbit. <laughs> Whoa. Everybody say hi, Luna. Hi, Luna. Look, she does disco. 
<laughs> All right, good. Hey, would you like to keep the bunny? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little attached to Luna, but because I know a little bit about engineering, I will engineer a bunny just for you. Thank you. All right? Now, Brooklyn, what is your favorite color? Pink. Whoa, we're going to need some magic. And Here, imagination. <laughs> take this wand, All right. wave it over the bag, and say, pink. Pink. Good. Now reach in and pull out one balloon and only one, and make sure it's pink. Oh, you are <gasps> magic. Nice job. How did you? I know something about science, but I don't know about all this magic. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it's all science. And now we're going to use a little balloon engineering to make a model of Luna. There we go. Oh, I forgot the tail. Could you blow right there? Nice shot. Good. And now we'll give you the magic wand, since you're obviously more magic than me. And you have Luna on a stick. Thank you. Or as I call it, a Luna stick. <laughs> well, that is amazing. And hey, we did it. We helped Luna accomplish her dream. She got to the moon. That's what science is for, is for accomplishing dreams. Back in 1969, they made a huge goal to get Americans on the moon. And they did it. Incredible men and women who worked in science, technology, engineering, and math, worked together to make it happen. And they used something that you use in class as well, the scientific method. Oh. Here it is, the scientific method. It's the simple process that you can use to make anything in science happen. First, you ask a question. Next, make a hypothesis or a guess. What do you think is going to happen? Next, do an experiment. Try it out safely. Next, observe. See what you're seeing and write down the results. Then you get your answer. You may not get the answer you're looking for right away, but all of this will give you information to get you closer to your goal. Hey, Brooklyn, can I show you a magic trick that uses the scientific method? Sounds perfect. Great. I need the students at home to observe which boomerang looks bigger. Brooklyn? They say red. Red, yes. Now, take another closer look and tell me which boomerang is bigger. Well, now they're saying yellow. Yeah, let me show you how. Uh, we're going to have to, you made two observations. Once time it looked like red, another time it looked like yellow. And now I have a question. How did it look like one was larger and then a different one was larger? Well, let's do an experiment, observe, and find the answer. If we take the boomerangs and place them right next to each other, we find out that they are the same. Same. This is an easy magic trick to make. I'll show you how to do it. You'll need a piece of paper which you fold in half. Then carefully draw a smiley face and carefully cut them out. Make your two boomerangs two different colors. Now, thanks to a little bit of math, the angle on the bottom of the smile is longer than the angle on the top. So if you take the long angle and put it on the short angle, it looks like the yellow one is bigger. But if you reverse it and take the long angle of the red one and place it on the short angle of the yellow one, it looks like it's bigger. It's an optical illusion. I see. That is really amazing. Using his brain, Paul came up with an amazing magic trick using science and math measurements. So you can try it today in your classroom or at home. You can easily make this at home in just one minute. Check it out. Fold your piece of paper in half lengthwise, corner to corner. You'll also need scissors and a marker. Grab your marker and draw a smile at the top. Draw another smile line a little longer below it. Then connect those two with lines so it's all in one shape. Next, cut out your two boomerangs following the lines. Now you have two boomerangs that are the same size, but depending on the angle at which you show them, one looks bigger than the other. You can experiment a little bit and show your friends. And trick them by asking which one is bigger and then amazing them by switching them and then showing them that they're the same size. 
Try it on cardboard, different colors of paper. Make it your own. Have fun. Oh, hey, let's ask another question. I love this experiment. So a long time ago, there was a great thinker. His name was Aristotle. One day, Aristotle was sitting out by a waterfall and he observed something amazing. I'm gonna to try to recreate it for you at home. To do this, you'll have to be just like a scientist and have amazing focus. You're gonna to wanna to look right here at the center of this disc. If you can stare at the center of this disc for 10 seconds while I count from 10 to one, you will see something amazing that Aristotle saw a long time ago. All right, here we go. Everybody focus on the center of the disc. 10, scientists have great focus. Nine, this is almost legal. Eight, you're doing great. Seven, keep your focus. Six, we're halfway there. Five, I was never good at math. Four, when we get to one, you're gonna look at my nose. Three, not yet. Two, get ready to look. One, look at my nose. What did you observe? I know what I observed. Your head got bigger. Yes, magicians have big heads. It's true. And guess what? It's not a camera trick. That really happened just right now. In fact, to prove it to you, let's try it again. Okay. Let's do it, and as a class, choose an object that you're all gonna look at after you're done staring at the disc. Put it in the front, near the screen, and then after you stare at the disc, quickly look at that object, a student's head, a flower pot, something, and you'll see it change size. All right, here we go. One more time. Don't forget, scientists have great focus. 10, look at the disc. Nine, focus will make you a success. Eight, you guys are great. Seven, you're wonderful. Six, is not halfway. Five, practice makes perfect. Four, get ready to look at your object. Three, not yet. Two, get ready to look. One, look at your object. Did you get the same result or did it look different? When we did it the first time, uh, it looked like I got a bigger head. But when we did it the second time, the object you looked at probably shrank. Why? Why was it different? Well, because for the first time, I spun it this way, which made your eyes open wider and see it expanding. And then I reversed the speed on the drill to go the other direction and then it made it look like it shrank. When Aristotle was watching the waterfall, the constant motion of the water played a trick on his eye. Then when he looked at the rocks next to the waterfall, it looked like they were rolling. Wow, so scientists make discoveries and then we can use that information as time goes on. Exactly. Amazing, so science is how and why the world works. As you ask questions and find answers, you can get smarter and make your dreams come true. S is for science, that's the S in STEM. Next up is technology. Technology are the inventions and the innovations that make our lives way better, okay? Oh, wait a second. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. That's my phone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> is it yours or mine? Uh, oh, it's yours. That one's mine, definitely. Okay, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hi! Yes, Alex, good to talk to you. It's Alexander Graham Bell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love chicken nuggets. I know, awesome invention, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm telling him right now. You should see what it looks like now. Okay. I know you're dead. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, bye. That was Alexander Graham Bell. He invented this. The telephone. This is what the telephone looked like when I was your age. It was a great invention that made it easy to communicate around the world. The problem was it always had this crazy cord. Good invention. Yeah, and before the telephone, the only way to talk to somebody was face-to-face, -face, scary, by a letter, really slow, or 
with your mind, not a lot of people can do it. But with the telephone, it became a lot easier, and Alexander Graham Bell was the first inventor to patent the telephone. And over the course of a hundred years, people have made it into something even easier, a cell phone. Have you seen one before? The telephone was a great invention. The cell phone is an innovation. That's right. Innovation is more inventions and an improvement on an invention. So the cell phone not only calls, but it sends a text. It's a whole computer where you can look up things that you want to know, a library, a gaming system, and a selfie taker. <laughs> a great invention. But the astronauts, in order to get to the moon, had to invent and innovate with a lot of different things. It's true. But you can do inventions too. Your teachers invent and innovate every day to teach you great lessons. Hey, do you want to see something I invented? Absolutely. Sure. Magicians are always inventing fun new tricks and inventing things to make our lives easier. Now, uh, sorry, before we do that, can we take a little break? I'm really hungry. Well, you're going to love my invention then. Really? Yeah. It's called the PB&J 2000. <gasps> It makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches super fast. Oh, I'm liking what I'm hearing. Do you like PB&J? Oh, yeah. All right, what do you need for a PB&J? Uh, PB, peanut butter. Peanut butter, luckily I have some right here. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Oh, no, this is the jelly. The J, I'm jelly. I'm so sorry. Uh, the peanut butter is over here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba yep, there it is. Awesome. Perfect. Now, uh, the next thing we need is some bread. Oh, bread! Could you examine the bread carefully and make sure there's nothing on the inside, nothing on the outside? And then if you'd be so kind, place it into perfect sandwich form. Nice! Place it inside the PB&J 2000. Good! So, I'm going to cover it up like this for your safety, okay? I'm going to ask you to hold that just like that. And then we're going to have to get some safety goggles. Is it safe? Uh, maybe. Oh. Good. Well, at least my makeup won't be ruined. Perfect! Good. Now, if you'd be so kind, hold it on top of your head. Oh, sure. Now, kids, I'm going to need your help again. We're going to count down from three. And then the jelly, it, like magic, is going to fly through the PB&J 2000 and leave the perfect amount of jam. At the exact same time, but in another dimension, the peanut butter is going to fly through the air leaving the perfect amount of peanut butter inside the sandwich. And then, of course, the peanut butter will be here, and the jelly will be over here. Oh, All right, yeah, we're going to sure. count down from three. Make sure you don't move. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. <coughs> oh, that was wild. Did you feel it? No. The jam flew across and is now over here. And the jelly, uh, excuse me, the peanut butter at the same time flew across and landed here. And now in the PB&J 2000, there's a perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> yeah, Why are you sure. laughing? Well, I don't believe you. You don't believe me? Prove it. Well, I'll prove it. It's easy to make a sandwich, but it's more difficult to unmake it. <laughs> Help me with the countdown. Here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa! Ooh. Did you feel it? No. <laughs> the jelly is now back over here, and the peanut butter is now back over here, and on top of our scientist Brooklyn's head, there's two pieces of plain bread. But that's exactly how it was before. You just said that the peanut butter went over here and the jam went over there, but you didn't really show any of it. And if I open this right now, sure, there's going to be two pieces of an unmade sandwich, but that doesn't prove anything. All right. Should we prove it to her? All right. Back on your head with the plain bread. We'll cover up the peanut butter. We'll cover up the jam. Better hurry. Let's I'm count down for three. Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa. Now, if it worked, the jelly should be over here. <gasps> the peanut butter should be over here. And inside here, there should be a perfect PB&J sandwich. Open it up, show them inside. Holy peanut butter and jelly. That, that looks incredible. We did it. It's a real sandwich. Thank goodness. 
I'll be taking my lunch break now, thank you. I gotta say, that magic super technology sandwich was delicious! I highly recommend trying out inventions of your own. So don't forget, technology are the inventions and innovations that make our lives better. So think of an invention that's made your life better. Maybe a cell phone, maybe a pencil, a computer, your house, lights, a toilet. All these inventions are awesome. Right, T was for technology, E is for engineering. Paul, you're a magician, but also an engineer. Come on out. Oh, I love engineering. Yeah. By the way, Brooklyn, I was reading this book about how American scientists engineered the rockets oh, to get us to the moon. That's awesome. This book is called A Visual Introduction to Rockets. Let me show you some great rockets I'd throughout history. Uh, first off, we have the, oh, this is the Soyuz oh, rocket. I heard about it. Yeah, that was the Russian rocket that beat us into space. Then, of course, we got the Saturn V rocket. Uh, that's the one that got the Apollo mission all the way up to the moon. That's awesome. The engineers had to figure out a way. Oh, yeah, I have my own model. <laughs> to get us past Earth's atmosphere to defy gravity and get to the moon. So these three stages of the rocket were all filled with fuel. And the astronauts sat way up here in this tiny compartment. It was amazing engineering. And then the pieces dropped off as the fuel was used. Let me show you some more great rockets throughout history. Uh, of course, there's the Houston Rockets. Hey, yeah, happy great March Great basketball Madness. team. And there's the rocket booster. That's the one that puts our space shuttle into orbit. Then, of course, there's Johnny Rockets, a great hamburger joint. Oh, if I didn't just eat a sandwich. And then there's the uh, heavy, the Falcon Heavy rocket. Oh, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of the satellites into space. Oh, and then my favorite, the Radio City Rockettes. <gasps> now, since rockets are made to defy gravity, I thought it would be interesting if we took this rocket book and turned it upside down to see if rockets really defy gravity. But when I flipped through, it was weird because the rockets were still flying straight up. What? Yeah. Wait, you just, you just flipped it. Yeah, I know. Some people don't think I really flipped it, but look, I'll flip it again, and you can see all the rockets still fly straight up. I thought, wait a minute, I got a great idea. It can't trick me if I do it sideways. Then there's no way that the rocket, whoa, the rocket still flies straight up. <laughs> Science and magic, combining for fun. <laughs> all right, uh, those, those rockets were made with some pretty intense engineering, but that was some really cool magic, yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about engineering. Engineering is problem solving and making things work. Do you think all those rockets happened on the first try? No, you have to work hard and never give up. Did you? Even the astronauts, even though they were using all that amazing technology, sometimes had to innovate. When they were returning from the moon, a switch in the lunar module broke. This caused a big problem because they thought they couldn't get back to Earth. But luckily, Neil Armstrong did a little innovation, took a ballpoint pin and stuck it in where the switch broke and was able to make an innovative switch, thereby saving the day. Phew! So that goes to show if you practice engineering and problem-solving thinking, you'll be able to get right in there when it's most important. And engineering is all about being innovative, using your mind to do your best. Engineering happens in a small and a huge scale every day. Look around and where you're sitting. The building that you are in was engineered specially by architectural engineers. And then check out your cell phone or my watch right here. Still the same amount of huge work, but tiny little computers and chips are engineered into this watch to make it tell time, tell my heart rate, and let me know when my husband is hungry. Yeah, it's amazing. Hey, and if it's okay with you, we're gonna show you a special video of a fun thing you can do with your friends, a little human engineering. That's right, check it out.
one more exciting topic to go over. Math! Now raise your hand if you love math. I love math. Math is measuring and making equations for what we, what we love. Hi, hi, where, where did you get the did cookies? Did you say, do I love math? Yeah. I hate math. Uh, but you love cookies. Oh yeah. I love cookies. <laughs> well, you know, math is what makes cookies possible. What? Yeah, there would be no cookie if there wasn't math. What are you talking about? Well, a cookie is an equation. It's a bunch of different parts added together in the right way, measured properly to equal uh, the perfect cookie. Oh, I see. So you're saying the recipe to make a cookie is the math equation. Exactly. Oh, so it's maybe not, I do like math. You're right. It's not just problems on a paper. It's how we build everything in our world. Addition, subtraction, numbers and division and multiplication, it all works together. What about juggling? I love to juggle. Oh, me too. I love juggling. And that has to do with math because oh. you got to get a correct parabola. Oh. Three balls, four balls, five balls. What all about dance? Oh, yeah. Dance, you know about it. Five, six, seven, eight. So, music too. Yeah, exactly, music too. I'll bet you I could even use math to do magic. Let's do a little math and magic together. So, Brooklyn, this is a collection of numbers. Ooh. When I found out that math could be magic, I started organizing and collecting numbers. That's what math does. It organizes numbers. So, I placed my number collection into eight rows of four, going left to right, and four columns from top to bottom. Now, Brooklyn, to do this trick, I'm going to close my eyes, turn my back, and have you pick a number. But since I don't want to hear what number you pick, just use a finger and touch one of the numbers. I'll turn my back. I'll hold it. Great. All right, my eyes are closed. Pick a number. It's picked. Kids at home, can you see it? They can. Perfect. All right, good. Now, Brooklyn, is the number that you touched also in this first column? Yes. Interesting. Is it also in the second column? Yes. Fascinating. Is it also in the third column? Yes. Oh, I'm good at this. And is it not in the last one? It's not in the last one. Ah, that means you picked number seven. Correct answer. <laughs> nice wow. job. Now, Brooklyn, you are magic too, because I know you've studied math most of your life. So I'm going to turn my back and ask you to touch the number that you think I'm going to say next. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'll turn my back. Mathematical mind reading. Here we go. This is the one I think he's going to say. All right. Perfect. I have made my hypothesis. <laughs> nice. Now, Brooklyn, is the number you touched also in this column? Yes. And it's also in this column? Yes. And it's even in the second column? Yes. And it's in the first column? Yes. I knew that you knew that I would pick 15. <laughs> That's right. We did it. Nice job. Are you ready to learn the secret? Every math problem has an equation to help you solve it. The equation in this trick is... 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, the second row! Ha <laughs> ha! You'll notice a pattern here. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 plus 4 is 8. Wow. This is the secret to the trick. That means it grows exponentially, but all you have to memorize is not the whole board, just four numbers. Now, when Brooklyn picked number seven, I asked her which columns it was in. It was in the first column, it was in the second column, and in the third column. But it's not in the last column. So all I had to do to know which number she picked was to add one plus two, which is three, and then three plus four, which is seven. And seven was her number. When she touched number 15, thinking that's the number I would say, 15 is in all, four columns. So if you add these four numbers together, then of course you get 15.
Now here's the secret for you so you can do this trick at home. Brooklyn has provided a download for you so you can make a copy of this. First thing you want to do is have your volunteer choose a number. Then you have them tell you which columns the number is in. Then you secretly add the numbers from the second row. That's right. And the sum is their number. The sum is the answer of an addition problem. Now you can do math magic too. We hope you have fun making one of these and tricking your friends and parents. Happy math magic time! Bye bye! Thanks so much for joining us today for the STEM show. Did you learn something? Did you have a ton of fun? I did too. STEM is about science, how and why the world works. Technology, the inventions and innovations that make our lives better. Engineering, problem solving and making things work. And math, the measurements and numbers that make the things in the world that we love. I've had so much fun reviewing science, technology, engineering, and math, my favorite things. And it's all thanks to Paul the Magician. No. Hey, Brooklyn, is it okay if we together use a little science, technology, engineering, and math to make a final bit of magic? I would love it. Tell me about it. Cool. Well, first, the more you learn, the farther you'll go. The real secret is, Magic isn't tricks. Magic is the perfect balance of science, technology, engineering, and math. Whoa! <laughs> and when you mix those things together, whoa! Whether or not you have a goal of getting to the moon or just having more fun with magic, I promise you, as you study STEM, all your dreams will take wing. Well, at least that's our experience. It's been great getting to know you. Have fun with STEM. Otherwise you'll end up as a bird brain. <laughs>